Teddy. <laughs> Teddy. Good morning. <laughs> it's is it time to do the green room already? It's time for the green room. You might want to go oh, get a cup of coffee. I was working so hard on the last one. I just I slept all the way until this one. So today we're chatting with Teza in the green room. Um, she's a totally independent artist, kind of does it all herself, which is crazy. Um, she's recently opened for Granger Smith, Hunter Hayes, um, and she performed at CMA Fest. And she's actually originally from the state of New York. Wow. I saw Hunter Hayes on The Masked Singer. Have you ever seen that show? I have. I haven't seen his episode, though. I didn't know he was on that. They did not guess that it was Hunter Hayes. It's going to be a great interview, and I can't wait to get speaking with her. So let's get her in the room. Are you sure you don't want to go get a cup of coffee first? I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Bam! Welcome to the green room. Yeah, bam, bam, bam. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the green room with Christy and Teddy. Today we have Teza on with us. We're gonna ask her some questions, have some coffee. You know, we're gonna we're gonna wake up, start the day right. So uh, why don't we get right into it, Christy? What do you got for her? All right. Well, so I know we were chatting a bit before. So you're from the Northeast, you're from New York. How did you get your start in music and like specifically country music being from New York? Country doesn't seem like the obvious choice. Mm -hmm. I get that a lot, which is funny because people assume that I'm from Manhattan or New York City. And I love New York City, but it's definitely not where I'm from. Um, I'm kind of right in the middle of upstate New York. And I, you know, I actually grew up on country music, which a lot of people are surprised by as well. Um, my mom loved the females of the 90s and 2000s, so we had every Faith Hill, Shania Twain, Trisha Yearwood, Dixie Chick CD, and so that's all we would listen to. It's, that's because that's what my mom listened to, and I just fell in love with it. I remember putting, when CDs were a thing, putting the CD into the car, and we would literally sing every single word of every song, and so I just fell in love with the songs. The artists, I love a good story song and country. I mean, if you love story songs, country is the way to go. And so I just always knew that that's what I wanted to do. And so when I was in like early high school, I decided, okay, I really wanted, I want to do music. And so I decided I wanted to form a band and I thought it was going to be something easy. And it turned out that country wasn't that cool at the time, apparently, which I didn't, I didn't realize, at least in my area. And so I, you know, approached these guys who had been, you know, musicians in my town, in my area for forever and had amazing bands. And I grew up going to see them. And I was like, guys, I want to start a country band. Will you play with me? And they're all like, oh, like, we don't listen to country. Like, we're rockers. And I was like, I get it. I love rock, too. But like, I don't see myself as a rock singer. And um, so they were like, you know, why don't we do this? Why don't we start? And so I was like, maybe I can coax them into it. We have enough fun. So my first band was actually a female-fronted rock band. We did everything from Flyleaf to Evanescence to Pat Benatar to ACDC. And it was actually really fun. So we would play local bars, and they had a, a full rock band, and so they would let me open for them. And so we'd go in, and I'd sing these rock songs. And I loved it, but it just still didn't quite feel like me. And so after playing for a bit, and they kind of got used to it, I started kind of sliding a few country songs in and uh, they actually, they actually really took to it. And so we decided to do a full country band. And so we played and toured all through New York. We played, you know, every festival and all the fairs and all the local bars. And mm. so in high school, it was awesome. I loved it. So would you consider yourself to be a bit of a country girl, even from the Northeast? I know I live in New Jersey. We have a lot of farms here. Is that yeah. like kind of, kind of your area where you lived? Yeah, it's funny because like you said, people assume when you say New York and New Jersey, they think the city or they think Jersey Shore. Like it's those two things. I, <laughs> I know. And there's just, there's so much more to it, which is funny. And, you know, both New Jersey and New York have so many, you know, areas that are very farm and country. And, you know, a lot of people just don't realize that. So Shout yeah, I definitely New consider Jersey. I grew up riding horses. So <laughs> it's funny. I was actually, I was in a, female fronted rock band for my first band in high school as well, which was hilarious. It was like Rage Against the Machine, like Nirvana, Guns N' Roses. So like, I totally understand when you're like, yeah, it was like me. 
and I was like doing all this. It's like, whoa, yeah, I was like 15, and yeah. I was like, uh -huh. killing in the name of bars. Like, <laughs> see, but you have a way edgier look than me. I feel like I could see you being in a female fronted <laughs> rock. Band. No, I did not look like this. Like, pretty blonde girl next door. I did have bangs, but like, young, innocent. Like, no, this is new. <laughs> <laughs> I like this though. It's working. Thank you. Something I always like to ask people in having a career like as a performing artist, what are some things that you thought would be challenging but actually weren't? And what are some challenges that you face? Um, you know, I think I think that I thought that being in front of people, mm -hmm. like being on a big stage with a lot of people on it would be something really hard to do. Because it seems very intimidating. If you've never done it before, it's like public speaking to me. That is so intimidating. <laughs> You're literally just standing there and nobody's talking back to you. It's just almost like a one-sided conversation and you have to be confident enough to just keep going and have it feel comfortable. And so I think I thought that that would be something really tough. And I think, it, I think the idea is tougher than the actual action because once I started a band, I realized that it's really, it's not that it's not hard, but it's just, it's your job to make other people feel comfortable. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you are and the more comfortable everybody else feels. So I think that's something that I thought was going to be much tougher than it ended up being. Um, and then I guess the opposite, I guess I would have to say that, you know, just everything that comes with being a musician, because you think, oh, I love music. I want to go play. That's, you know, the dream. You're like, okay, start a band, start playing. It's just not that simple. There's just so many facets to being, you know, an independent, uh, independent artist. Because you look at someone like Carrie Underwood and you're like, wow, that's great. Because she has a team behind her and she has all these people doing all these different facets. So someone does her music video and someone does her photos. And, you know, she works really hard, but she just, she's not in charge of each and every facet. And I think you realize being an independent artist that you really are an entrepreneur. Like you're your own small business. And in the beginning, you have to do everything yourself. You know, even if it's something that you've never done before. So, you know, in the beginning, you have to do your own music videos and photos and promotion and, you know, you name it and I, you do it. And so that's something I think I didn't, I just didn't know. You know, I had never done it, you know, that widely before, especially with your own music. So when I started writing songs, I think that's when I really saw, you know, what all went into being an artist. Definitely multifaceted and, yeah. and you're right, it, you have to be your own business. You have to be in that mentality that what you're doing is like, you know, a service, you're, you're an entertainer. So you definitely have to keep all that in mind. Um, going on that, I wanted to ask you, I was, you know, bopping along this morning, brushing my teeth, listening to Mercury Rising. I wanna hear a little bit about, about how that came about, what the new sure. single. So I, yeah, I'm really excited about this song. This is one of my favorites. So I actually went in and did, uh, I recorded an EP. And so there's multiple songs on it and I released one. So Mercury Rising is the second single that I put out. And it was funny because that song, a lot of the times, you know, there's, there's a big story behind the song. And this one was honestly just, I'd woken up this morning, that morning, and I'd been watching the news and they described, I forget how they said it, but they described something like the mercury was rising, like the temperature was getting hotter, actually like a weatherman. And something about that just really stuck with me. And I was like, wow, that is such a cool visual mm. to me. Like I pictured it and I was like, that's just so cool. And I'd had a right that morning. So I'd been brushing my teeth and I was like, mercury rising. Like, can you feel, can you feel the mercury rising? I was like, oh, mm. I kind of like that. And so I actually went into this right and I was like, this sounds weird, but <laughs> I was brushing my teeth this morning and I just came with this, with this line let's work on that. Yeah, like, mm, you could feel the mercury. That should be the music video. Deep. You never know what could happen. You could find cool songs. You could There's write a new songs. <laughs> yeah. Teeth, listening to Mercury Rising, brushing his teeth. You thought of it, brushing your teeth. You kind of just called that. <laughs> and so it was one of those things where I brought it in. I was like, hey, here's this idea. And I have this idea of, you know, being out. And when you first meet somebody, even if you don't know them, it's kind of like instant attraction. And so I was like, mate, let's just combine the two because you can feel this heat rising. It kind of has that idea to it. So we sat down and we wrote the song in two hours. 
I mean, it was just like, it was one of those ones where you sit down and it just kind of falls out. Um, Cause you guys probably know, sometimes you sit down and a song is just like, you come back to it, you know, yeah. three or four times and it's just never right. This one, for some reason, just like right out, in and out, two hours, it felt great. Um, I'd actually gone home and did a little demo because I, I kind of heard exactly what I wanted in the chorus. I could hear all these like chords underneath it. So we like, I made a little demo for it and it just is always stuck with me. So I was like, that's gotta be the next single. Well, but so with your songwriting process, you're talking about you had to write that day and you went in, you know, what is your songwriting process? Do you prefer to co-write? Do you like to kind of write alone? Um, are you like a lyrics first kind of person? Yeah. You know, I think my songwriting, my approach to songwriting, it, it can vary. It depends on, you know, what's going on. Sometimes it starts with just, like I said, just one little line that I was like, that just feels really cool to me. Let's build around that. But a lot of the times it starts with a title and idea first, I think, for me. Um, and it's just easier for me to write that way because sometimes you can start a story and you get halfway through and it's a completely different story. So I find it easier to start with the big main idea so that I can keep that all the way through. Um, and then as far as co-writing, I do co-write and I love doing that and I write for other people as well. Um, but I also really enjoy writing by myself. Um, so the first single around the truth that I put out is actually a song I wrote by myself, which is cool, just putting something out that was just me in the beginning. And then Mercury Rising I wrote with one other co-writer. Her name is Emily Falvey and she's in Nashville. And so I really like, I love doing both. You get something very different each way. So I think it's nice to mix it up. Around the Truth felt more rooted in that like country, like when you talk about Carrie Underwood's about that like that vein of pop country and then Mercury Rising, like you said, like it's kind of like kind of hard, like it like, kind of like slaps. There's a little like, edge to it. Rock. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, I dig it. Yeah, that's awesome. Co-writing is fun. I feel like when I'm stuck, I co-write and like it yeah. frees me up. And then other yeah. times co-writing is like a struggle. So it really depends on who you're with. I know we're in an age of like less performance than usual but if you're gonna look back on your career what are some of your favorite performances so far that you you know you've been able to do that were very memorable that were kind of like a milestone yeah you know I I actually love playing live I think that if you were to ask me what's one of your favorite parts of being an artist I think you know a live show as you guys know, there's nothing like that. Like being on a stage in front of people that all they want to do is hear your music. And there's just something about the instruments and the band and the feeling. It's just, it's definitely, you know, a little bit of a high. And I, I love that. And so I've been really lucky in the past, I guess it's been the past year or two, I've been really lucky to be able to go on tour and open for bigger artists, um, especially in the country genre. And so one of, the, one of the things that I always look forward to every year is playing CMA Fest in Nashville. Because that's really fun because it's not just, you know, a typical audience. It's literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all over the world who are spending three full days in Nashville and all they want to do is see music. So everyone there is so excited that it's a really cool feeling to be up on a stage and playing full band and just everyone there is so interested, which is really cool. So would you consider yourself like an independent artist? Did you do this all on your own or... What is there? Is there like a team behind you? What's going on? Because you know yeah. we're also interested in all that kind of stuff. I love to, I love to hear sure. about how people put together their, their careers and all that. Yeah, and you know it's funny because as musicians, as musicians, as you guys as well, it's, you know everybody gets there in a different way. There's no, it's not like you know becoming a doctor. We say okay, I want to be a doctor. You go school, you go to medical school, you do residency, you know, you follow the same steps to a degree. Being a musician, there is no right or wrong way to get there. And which is a cool thing and also can be a frustrating thing. But, you know, right now I am 100% independent. Um, so I'm really doing every facet of everything myself. Um, so, you know, long term, that's the next step will be, you know, looking for a record deal and doing that and building a team. But in the beginning, I really wanted to, before I pushed that, get something that I thought, like I said, was really me. I wanted to have a package. I wanted to have songs and an image. And I wanted to, and almost a brand, if that makes sense, before I went and did that. Because I think that's what sets artists apart, you know? It doesn't mean you have to be the best singer in the world. It doesn't mean you have to write the best song. But usually with artists that make it, there's something about them that 
draws you to them and you know it's them. And so it took me a long time to find that, but I finally feel like I did. And so I have been doing everything myself and I'll tell you now, it's a lot. I mean, <laughs> it's fun because I've learned a, a lot of things, but it's definitely, you know, it's a full-time job. Absolutely. That's crazy for you to be doing, I mean, congratulations, like, wow. You. Thank you. Like, really, that's <laughs> Showing everybody it's possible, you can do it. Yeah, well, you know, and it is daunting, but I feel like everyone can do anything. I mean, it's great to have a team, and there's definitely things that, that would help having a team, but I think if you take the time and, you know, for, for me, for example, with my first song, I knew I couldn't focus on everything. So... I was like, what can I focus on to do the best I can possibly do? So I really focus on Spotify because, you know, there's Apple Music and Amazon Music and you name it, but it's really hard to focus on all of that. So I picked one and I did so much research and I watched so many blogs and so many, you know, stories. And I just tried to learn from everyone else that's done it before. And so that really helped as well. You're a person, first and foremost, and an artist, sure. but you are a brand and it's yeah. tough, like, okay, how do I market myself as this branded version, make it consistent, and then if you don't have a good grip on that and then you bring in a team, you don't have the clear vision, so then that outside influence can be a little bit muddly, like right. it can be a little muddy. So yeah. be sure to follow Tezza um, on socials at the.tezza mm -hmm. um, for quality A1 content. There's some funny stuff, I have to say. <laughs> I'm looking through. Um, this the season's uh, hottest fashion trend, toilet paper. And yeah. if you want to know what I'm talking about, <laughs> or follow her on Instagram. You got to go check it out for yourself. Who would ever think the day that we'd be actually saying that? I know, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you had it at the time, you were like, you were cool. Sitting on a throne. It's like, instead of the iron throne, it's the paper throne. Like, yeah, you're just like doing this with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Get it rain. <laughs> well, it was great to chat with you today. Thank you so much for coming on. Heck yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been, you guys are awesome. And I can't wait. Like I said, this new song, I'm really excited about it. I'm just excited to have it out and have people listen to it and, you know, love it as much as I do. So, and I really appreciate you guys taking the time to share it and have me on. And it means a lot, especially being an independent artist. It means a lot to all of us. Definitely. So we recommend you go check out Tezza's new song, Mercury Rising, on Spotify. Go check out her socials. Give her a like, give her a follow, all that good stuff. Uh, we are The Green Room, Teddy and Christy. Wonderful to have you today. Peace out, everybody.